Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? We're drinking O'Grady's Four Leaf Clover Stout. <laughs> Four Leaf Clover. <laughs> From the Clover Batch. Burn in hell, little green bastard. Today we're going to be talking about 1980s Maniac. All right. And it's about damn time. <laughs> This movie was directed by William Lustig, and he did the god-awful piece of garbage Uncle Sam. Which we covered <laughs> yeah. not too long ago. Click the link. Maniac is written by and stars the legendary Joe Spinell. <laughs> probably most notably in Godfathers 1 and 2 and in Rocky 1 and 2. He was in Cruising as well. Yeah, yeah, he was, yeah. <laughs> You're cruising for a piece of ass. Carolyn Monroe's in this and she was in a lot of Hammer movies. So Maniac starts off. You see a hand put a quarter in one of those kind of binocular telescope things. There's a couple getting a little cozy on the beach and the guy goes to get some wood lady's left all by herself and this figure comes up behind her and slits her throat the guy comes back with the wood and this figure comes behind him and strangles him blood start to come yeah, out yeah just cut, neck. cuts into his yeah. throat like drops oh. the wood and you can see all the blood squirting on the wood and his shoes then our main character frank zito wakes up <laughs> <laughs> he's in this weird room with all these like candles and Pictures of women and mannequins. Looks in the mirror and all these scars all over his chest. Gets dressed and goes out for the night. A couple of prostitutes. You gonna give him the ultimate? Yeah, they're talking about yeah, the, the pricing. The ultimate is the highest price, so she's gotta aim for the ultimate. Frank Zito walks by. She stops him. They go up to the hotel right there. Very convenient. They go up to the room and he's laying there. That belt all had gold on it. <laughs> being kind of awkward. He doesn't really want anything. And she kind of has to get heavy with him. Eventually, he doesn't like it and starts strangling her. Yeah, I like how he turns on a dime. Yeah. Like, you bitch! Yeah. Scalps her. Takes his scalp back to his apartment and puts it on a mannequin. Then you see him getting ready for another night of fun. <laughs> He's got this violin case open. Box of Cracker Jacks. So, um, yeah. um, I'm feeling this violin case with guns. This like, fucking arsenal yeah. and knives and shotgun <laughs> shells he gets in his car and sees this woman that he likes outside of a nightclub they get in the car and they drive away so he follows them and they go off to like a makeout spot tom savini by the way <laughs> yeah. has picked this girl up and convinces her to get in the back seat with him. It's the mustache. You see Frank Zito, he's all peering in. It's super creepy. Scares the shit out of her. Yeah, she's like, oh, I saw something. And both get in the front seat, turn on the headlights, and he's there with the shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> Jumps on the hood and just, boom, blows Tom Savini's head right <laughs> off. Like, it's one of the best headshots yeah. ever. Though. Tom Zivini earned his pay big time. <laughs> Frank Zito goes to the park and there's this woman kind of taking pictures. Little girl runs into him with her bike and the photographer sees this, takes a picture of him. Wanders over to where her bag is, gets the address. Two nurses that have just got off their shift. Well, you sure you don't want to ride? There's... Maniac on the loose. Yeah, exactly. He's still on the loose. <laughs> <laughs> Foolishly declines the ride, right? And she starts walking to the subway station she gets a sense that somebody's behind her she gets to the platform and the train is still there but the doors are closed and she's trying to force the doors open she can't get them open so she's fucked meanwhile this figure starts coming down the stairs so she takes off to the washrooms and hides in one of the stalls he comes in after her starts checking out each of the stalls but leaves the one that she's in. She comes out, figures she's got away with it, and ding! Huge bayonet. Fuck <laughs> right <laughs> into her back, right through the front too. Like, holy shit. He shows up at this photographer's house. He's not really there to kill her though. Totally different. Kind of asks her out. He's like, well, you know, I know this place in Jersey and they got great Clams Casino. And... <laughs> what the hell is Clams <laughs> Casino? <laughs> He's all dressed the nines with yeah. all that Disco type shit on <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, that doesn't look like a fucking bum like he does in the rest of the movie. 
she's charmed by him, right? So she yeah. goes and they have a nice dinner and she's got a photo shoot and he kind of shows up. He's all got that present. Yeah, that present, <laughs> that stuffed bear. Yeah. He's making those sounds. <sighs> I'm like, yeah, I would be too if she was wearing those <laughs> leather pants. Goes over to this necklace and he steals it. The model is in her apartment and she hears a knock at the door and it's Frank Zito, right? I found this. I think you lost it. And while the door's open, he does something with the latch. She closes the door. She draws a bath. Dring! He comes out of the closet just out of nowhere ties her to the bed and he's like full-on maniac by this point you'll never leave me you'll never leave me will you pulls out a knife and really teases it too yeah yeah, yeah. but he does end up killing her after he told her that he was gonna keep her forever goes to pick Anne up for their date he tells her he's like hey do you, do you mind if we stop by my mother's grave I just want to put some flowers on it she says sure no problem that's where we're gonna end it yeah. there's a lot more weird shit that happens with the maniac. <laughs> so if you want to see how maniac ends, well, fucking watch the movie, cause it's great. One of the most unsung slashers of all time. Like, it does get praise within the horror community, but like a lot of people outside of horror got no clue how good this fucking movie is. Mm -hmm. And one of the best things about it is Joe Spinell. <laughs> yeah, pretty much a one-man show, right? And he's strong enough to carry the whole movie. Talk about an underrated actor. Kind of mirrors Sylvester Stallone, because he was friends with Stallone. He was in Rocky, and Stallone wrote Rocky, starred in Rocky. Well, Joe Spinell's like, ah, fuck, well, I can do that too. So he wrote this and starred in it. Wasn't as big as Rocky, but yeah. it did make waves in the horror community. And because it was kind of seedy and sleazy and pretty gruesome for the time, it didn't get like a, a lot of love from the masses. Maybe the poster had something to do with it. The guy holding that the knife the and everything head. with the big boner. He's got a big <laughs> fucking heart on it. Another thing about Joe Spinell is he apparently was one of the highest paid people on The Godfather because he just hung around and got paid. For hanging around. Yeah, because he was clocking <laughs> in and not really doing anything. But Coppola took like a liking to him. He's like, oh yeah, hang out, like learn. The dynamic of Joe Spinell's character is crazy in this movie because he switches gears when he goes to that woman's apartment. Yeah, he's nice. And yeah, he's charming. Yeah. He's completely different, right? And it kind of mirrors real killers. Yeah. Right? How these people can meld into society, you'd never ever know they were a killer. Especially real killers of that time. Of exactly. the 80s and stuff like that that we're learning about now, like the, the Gacy tapes just came out on yeah, Netflix. Yeah. They're all charming guys. Well, he doesn't look like anybody who would be a murderer. Yeah. That's the key. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a real nice change from like Michael Myers. And you get to know Frank Zito. And you, you know, his mother died. And what is it with his mother that made things go off here for him? You sympathize with him. Something happened. You see the scars. It's a lot like, you know, don't go in the house, which we just covered. The whole mother thing. I like that they don't go into a backstory. It's just all what he's saying to yeah. himself. That's what makes it different than like, don't go in the house. Mm -hmm. You don't see the flashbacks. It's all left up to your imagination. The effects. Tom Savini, you can't go wrong. No. The head explosion scene, that's all you need to really mention. It's fantastic. And he always talks about how he's so proud of that. Effect. Yeah, it's uh, awesome. His own head exploding, <laughs> you know. But even the scenes of like where he's scalping the, mm. the women and everything, they don't even show that much, but it's enough to make you feel yeah. uneasy, and right? Stabbing the girl right in the gut with the switchblade. No wonder this movie was kind of frowned upon because it's just so realistic. Yeah, and it's graphic. Yeah. From the killings to the acting to the characters, it's all realistic. You believe this is all happening. The tension too in this movie, you're on the edge of your seat the whole time. Yeah. He's so crazy that he could literally do anything. And when he's chasing someone down, like the nurse in the subway, like it's a long scene. He's gonna get her. When is he gonna get her? He keeps getting drawn out and you're just like getting more tense. They don't really show him at all. No. You know he's there. It's all her. It's yeah. all her and her yeah. reaction and the fact that she's scared as hell. That scene is brilliant. The tension building in that scene is perfect. And then naturally he just comes out of nowhere, yeah. right? And just finishes her off. And same thing when he goes to give the necklace back to the model. The tension building is fantastic yeah. in that too. Because you think he can just easily 
bust the door open and, and kill her. Do something. But no, right? he takes his time. <laughs> exactly. He enjoys. He wants to stalk her, and yeah, it's great. The settings of this movie is fantastic. Like his apartment, mannequins, and the pictures of the women, and his mother with all the candles. His room is his mind. It's in New York, but it's the worst parts of New York. The dirty, seedy, like you don't want to be there parts of New York. You feel dirty. All of the dark night shots and everything yeah. with the fog too. You really yeah. get the sense that yeah. you're alone in a huge city. Yeah. You know, there should be people there around. There should be people everywhere, but no one's there to help. <laughs> the music in this movie too is, oh, it's perfect. It's so eerie and tense. Yeah. And it just builds it just builds every scene perfectly this movie's totally relatable too because the stuff that was happening at the time right you had right. a lot of these weird murders yeah. going on Ted Bundy son of Sam murders it mirrors all of that and it hits close to home seeing this in 1980 it must have hit close to home for a lot of people yeah like, who, were, who were kind of like oh that could happen to me in New York no yeah. less this movie was remade recently, and it's actually one that I will vouch for. I don't vouch for many remakes, but this one is quite good, actually. It takes a different approach, starring Elijah Wood. And there was a sequel that had kind of started out for this, too, right? Joe Spinell, he ended up dying so they could never fulfill yeah. the idea, right? Joe Spinell died young. He died, like, in his early 50s. He accidentally cut himself, went to bed and bled to death. Could have done some great things, I think, even though he was always chasing Maniac. But I think if he stuck around, he could, probably could have made another great movie, and we never got to see it, which is too bad. If you love slashers, you have to check out Maniac. It's one of the best underrated slashers of all time. That's right. And until next time, keep drinking.